I want to talk about two things that uh, uh, are really about health, but I want to talk about the actual technology that's being used for the smart meters and the thing that concerns us about it, and then talk about the politics of what to do uh, as directly as possible. The, 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 the smart meter is a piece of uh, a broader program, national program, to uh, implement what's called a smart grid. Smart grid is not intended to, as sometimes advertised, to lower our carbon footprint or to conserve energy. It is intended to lower the requirement for adding new facilities to uh, the electric power, what's called the electric power grid. The electricity, when we turn on, turn on lights anywhere, pulls electricity off of a bunch of wires that we can see all around, uh, and that energy get, can be produced someplace that's very close or very far away. When everyone on the hottest day of, on August 25th turns on their air conditioner, it creates a, a, a huge demand so that the utilities, which have to provide the energy, have to build those plants. But they don't use them most of the time. The only times they use them is at those, what, what are, what's called peak load. Um, so the, the problem that's being solved by this is not a conservation problem. It is not a carbon footprint, footprint problem. It is a financial problem for the utilities that produce electricity. And the piece that the smart meters play in this, uh, in, in this scheme is it enables, will enable the, public, the utilities to control how you consume energy so that their load can be balanced, so that they don't get peaks, there are uh, sudden peaks, blackouts, brownouts, those sorts of things. So you will have a device on the side of your, people will have a device on the side of their house that gives PG&E and other utilities access to your home and what is going on in your home. Right now, a human being comes out and looks at the dials that are on the meter that's on the side of your house typically once a month. Um, the, uh, the, the smart meter will enable what's called time of day metering. That is, uh, the, the utility will be able to tell what time of day you're using electricity. And at, during those times of day when, uh, when a lot of people are using electricity, they will be able to uh, charge you more for that electricity than otherwise. You, you supposedly will read that signal and decide not to turn on your air conditioner when you get home from work or to turn off your, replace your refrigerator or so, some other nonsense, some other nonsense story that they have. But the, the essence of, of the smart meter is that it's the, it's the gateway for the utility into your house. Now, the smart meter can be implemented in, uh, in several ways. Originally, I just found this out recently, when PG&E first proposed uh, using smart meter, the method that they uh, proposed for transmitting that information from your house to PG&E headquarters was to use the existing electrical lines to send the data over that. And that's, that's a technology that's being, it's actually very bad technology that's, that's being promoted because uh, it's, it's being promoted because the wires are already there. Signals can be carried along those wires from a home to some central place. Um, actually, I don't know the details of why that was rejected, but ultimately PG&E decided that it was, it was uh, economically not feasible to do that, or technically not feasible to do that. They would not be able to carry the amount of information. What they switched to was they planned to use radio frequency radiation antennas mounted on, uh, on the meters themselves to transmit that information. I'm going to go into how that, a bit about how that works because therein lies a good deal of the danger. I want to skip over and talk about 
what everyone technically agrees technically is the desirable method for implementing a smart meter, that is, establishing communication, and that's what, what's called fiber optic to the home. Uh, fiber optic does, is, is literally that. It's glass wire that carries visible light that um, yeah, technical people could tell you much more than I can about it, but essentially the, the amount of information and the speed with it which can be carried is vastly greater than using radio frequency signals and antennas. PG&E has rejected this because they say it costs too much. This, in, uh, in fact, is nonsense because there are many um, internet service providers such as Google um, and up where I live in Sonoma County, uh, Sonic.net, which uh, is, has plans to, to uh, hook up houses uh, using fiber optic to the, to, to the home. Um, in any event, uh, five years ago when pg e was going through this and switched to uh, RF, uh, RF based signaling communication with smart meters, uh, it was purely an economic uh, decision. It's, it's cheap and it is built on the idea of what is called a mesh network. A mesh network is uh, if you understand the concept of a local area network or a, a network in your in your house, if you have uh, computer services where a, a wire comes out of a modem and goes to your computers, you have a network goes to multiple computers, you have a network. Um, there are wireless modems which emit radio frequency radiation, which can connect computers. And essentially what the mesh network is, it's a big, vast, wireless network that goes through neighborhoods, cities, across the state, that connects from your meter to PG&E headquarters using radio frequency signals. The reason this is particularly dangerous is that the um, PG&E and none of the technologists, because none of these, no such network has ever been installed, does not, no one knows how much exposure people are actually going to be subject to. The exposure uh, statistics that, that PG&E has come up with have been what people will be exposed to with a signal, single meter, which is bad enough. But once a, an entire neighborhood or entire city is wired up. The, uh, many people are, are estimating that the actual exposure that some people will be subject to will be astronomical, orders of magnitude greater than a single meter because meters become transit stations for signals. The meter on your house could be the way station for the 20 homes around your home. So the information comes from their home, comes to your meter, and gets passed on to signaling devices elsewhere and gets sent back, sent on to PG headquarters. So the danger here is not just from the radio frequency uh, exposures from individual meters, it's once this whole network gets fired up, what people are going to be exposed to. So there's, uh, th there's, um, virtually nothing known about how that works, about what the exposures are actually going to be. There's, um, like I said, estimates that this, these exposures could be, uh, are likely to be far greater than anyone's uh, estimating. And one of the, the fig leaves that PG&E hides behind with regard to this issue is that whenever the issue of health effects is brought up, the PG&E says that um, uh, it, 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 can't, it, it can't really address that problem because that's something that's governed by the Federal Communications Commission. This is a false claim because the Federal Communications Commission does not have any standards for persistent, for uh, long-term exposures of these kinds. 
the kinds of you're going to be of long-term, low-grade exposures such as those coming from these meters. So there has been an application filed by the EMF Safety Network, um, which is at the website emfsafetynetwork.org, which is, as far as I know, the most active group on this issue so far. The, uh, take down this number. The application number for this before the, that they have a, uh, made to the Public Utilities Commission is 10-04-018. That application is asking for a reversal of the original uh, application made by PG&E before the PUC. And it asks for fundamentally two things. A moratorium to investigate the environmental health safety, security, and uh, performance risks associated with use of smart meters, and asks that the CPUC implement an opt-out option. What the opt-out option means is that if you don't want one of these things on the side of your house, they can't make you. Right now, if you call the number at, uh, at support from PG&E, you will get someone who will actually get hostile with you if you, if you express a desire not to have one of these things on your house. So um, the important thing for you to do is to write a letter to the CPUC that, uh, and if they're, they're to, to in support of, of that application. There's a petition. Sign that petition that has many of the elements in it that the, the, the application before the CPUC has. And I also want you, most importantly, to get in contact uh, with the office of uh, Dean Flores in the State Senate and Mark Leno, who is your